Welcome to Onivia, League of Legends Highlights. These are the best highlights from today's LEC matchup. At level 2, while Adam only just now ticked over to level 2, we kind of look at all this XP being shared. TP now comes into the bot side of the map. Pull it out, Mundo goes where he pleases, drops on the ground. That's denied, that means CC can now hit him as Broken Blade walks up the top wave. He's thinking, what can I do? But Slice and Dice in between and the auto attack still connect. He dies for it as meanwhile on the bottom side. There's a trade for Adam. Yike flashes away. Han Summer takes another turret shot. It is better for BDS through bot. And Adam getting one there at least means an advantage. Broken Blade didn't even get any of that experience off of trying to get to the tower. Thanks a nice knock up. But now he's TP back. But the tower shots are brutal against BDS. And that might just caught nice. him out there. What's happening? I mean, the Arcane shifts away. He still has the summoners up and available. I guess the one plus. The fact that Yike is one of the recipients of a lot of the lead that G2 generated because he got his camps on the top side, then got to go and take some of those camps on the bottom lane that Sheo had to abandon because of Mickey. So he's got an experienced lead and now wants to lean that into bot lane. And now with the damage in bot lane as well, it makes it easy to get this engaged. LeBrov has his summoners available, but how are they going to pop it here? Good root from Yike. The cleanse comes out as Mickey jumps in for another dredge line. Part two is even better for Ice. He gets a return kill. Mickey goes too far. Now, Mickey's... It's a little more difficult to operate in that star because maybe Adam just gets too tanky to kill, but right now he's not. And Yike realizes that. It comes back to your point. Let's try and escalate once again. Underneath turret, there's Dominus popped immediately. Root down because the passive is down and Broken Blade gets kills. He pops Adam right into the ground. A very clean dive. And G2 finally finding some success in some of these early plays. Yeah. It's going to set up this Renekton beautifully and kind of further exacerbate the experience difference that was already there a little bit, but is now going to be a full level gap between the two. Back to us, and they shall proceed. Three back out onto the map. Very nice farm from him, 122 CS, 11 minutes in. But here comes Yike, and here comes Sheo. Oh, the line does connect, though, and TP's going to be coming down from Adam. The arrow to commit onto the jungle, but they haven't killed him yet. As he flashes away, BDS re-engage on the summonerless Han Summer. Man, he's been calling Han's mama after getting taken down as BDS commit all, and they want more gold to speed it up. Really good play from uh, BDS. They knew Adam had TP advantage, but now Adam needs to get out from underneath the tower. Should be able to do so but it will leave Broken Blade with that alone time of the terror to take that one for himself. We've just been seeing throughout this early game that Ezreal, Maokai, and Rakan just have a stronger 3v3. Yeah. And then that was only further reinforced the moment that Adam joined the fray. The you turret's gonna go down. It's very clear that their priority is just securing this turret, but also I think that G2 don't seem to like it when Han Sama is put behind. And so the moment that they see all this pressure being thrown towards him, they said, you know what, let's leverage our strength. Let's bring Broken Blade from the top side of the map, make sure that we unlock this bot tower. Sure, we'll sacrifice the grubs, but we'll set ourselves up for the next dragon as well. The and dragon. BDS, with the health that they had, I thought that they'd be more confident in actually going for the contest. But I guess because they used so many ults in the exchange with so much of the utility gone, they said, you know what, we'll concede it. This solid player who over farms his mid laner and gets ahead individually, uses that in team fights later. Here in this game, ahead of both teams with very similar compositions. In terms of their execution, there is degrees of difference. Now Mickey, one in danger. Again, once more, deep into the breach as Sheo just keeps him there, spaces him, Lebrov helps out, but here's Han Sama to the rescue. AD carry, please save me, but I'm not sure he can. Mickey TP. flashes away while Adam chases him down, and as he gets a kill, Broken Blade, yeah, he's bullying Nuke on the backside but he can't finish off the play. He's now outranged as for G2. This has got a little bit sketchy. They've lost their engaged support and Broken Blade's gotten low. Yeah, they need to be careful and not overextending on the play because Hansama still has that Ash ult, so they can turn very quickly and set up for it. Broken Blade now trying to draw them down to bot lane off of this mid lane turret, but Yike here to support. Yike leveraging Daisy to apply this in the near future, but Nuke and Ice are about to fully stack those tiers and that's going to be a huge spike for BDS with their front line as well. Oh, is LeBrov is walking the fog of war, and we might pause that thought. A pick out here on the Rakan, but the quickness gives him space. He turns it into an engage, and for LeBrov getting out with the death charge on his head, he survives, and now G2 are in so much trouble as Adam starts running down and cleaving the ground. Yike flashes around, and now Ice is coming for him. Han Summer gets off on the back line, and that's going to be the start of Aaron. Look at how strong this front line is from BDS. G2 just don't have the damage yet, and with the member down, BDS feel confident to start off the Baron. They had no TP on Broken Blade, as Hysterics was saying, so BDS bring on Adam, and now Lebrov off on the side, has no flash, we can look for a potential engage, but Baron is gone. 
Yike with no redemption either makes it that much harder. Broken Blade just tries to get something mid as Herald Charge is still going to come through, but G2 might even lose Mickey here after that said charge. Was it worth it, my son? We'll have to find out in the long run. Ice with another kill and Harold will just drop here, but Baron over to BDS is a big game swing. But now those map advantages that G2 had don't really mean much. It's ultimately just a lot of standing yep. gold for BDS to go and grab with the Baron at their backs. G2. Relatively high chance that this was just going to turn into a numbers advantage for BDS, especially with Baron spawning. But now oh. again, G2 first at the objective. And I mean, even the True Shot Barrage to start off this objective as Mickey goes in, but I don't know if he's going to get out this time. What do I mean this time? He's never getting out of these fights. Ice with a fourth kill opens up the show, and BDS in this series look like they're ready to go. Dragon might even be theirs too, as G2 have to back away because Adam's also pushing mid. Adam is pushing mid, which means the G2 might spot that it could be a potential for 4v4 with that big tank out of the way. But now Adam just going to shove in. He'll back it up as LeBrov is going to escort him out. And Dragon will go to BDS. The beauty of what BDS are doing is that they don't really need to do anything. They've just allowed G2 to be the ones to make the plays, and they've punished them with just a very straightforward and easy to execute composition. Yep. Oh, you want to start a fight? Adam will TP in. Uh, you want to engage in us? Maokai has the ultimate. Oh, your AD carry who doesn't have flash? Well, we have Rakan who can easily dive onto the back line. And at no point have we ever really seen Nuka Ice under any threat in this game. But the funny thing is, that's what G2 used to do to BDS. Hey, like, what are you going to do about it? You are the ones making mistakes. And have come into that said mid game that G2 always thrived in and pummeled them quite easy. Side lanes. And it's kind of G2 who taught them these lessons, whether they wanted to or not. You now get to feel the wrath of this of BDS set up on mid. This is a great ultimate opportunity for Shale if he looks for it. And ultimate opportunity for Ice as well as he keeps showing as he does the damage to poke them down and threaten. Now with that Baron, they weren't able to break into tier twos and through mid, but that pauses now because Shale has to ult and flash away. So for G2, there's comeback potential with Broken Blade flashing in and a late TP from Nuke, but the jungle's already dead. LeProf, his angle no longer exists because G2 have numbers in his face. Now running up is Broken Blade yet again, but G2 with their pick. Nothing up on the map apart from turrets here to get them BDS in the lead. trying to do the same because they see Broken Blade on the side. They're grouped as multiple members, and now they get the mid lane tower. So a huge amount of this game so far has been a case of... So one habit. Now they can move off towards sides to push out these waves if they need to. Or maybe they just want to threaten the Baron itself. Yeah, G2 kind of getting out of that danger oh. zone. Ice damage is big, and Mickey, as he runs on in, is about to find out the cleaver of Adam and what it can do as well. Locked on down, Adam cares not. LeBrov gets him right into the engage. Again, the arrow will mean nothing as Shogun gets the ulti, but LeBrov this time will be taken down. Broken Blade thinks about the angle as Adam is just getting targeted as well, but it's still neck and neck. The health bar's better for BDS, but G2 have more members. Always oh, likely to get back out, and LeBrov got caught there, and BDS still technically win the fight from a health bar point of view so they get the dragon but you do get that patient forcing g2 back get to start off the baron but it's spotted all while that was happening nuke was pushing in the bot wave he gets up to 18 he can go back to base tp in and now they have the numbers advantage with caps and bots Rob. remember mickey's by himself han sama walking in as well this could be a trap and a with the quickness as well finds the engage on the perfect <laughs> target just like that the dirt is gone a quick double for our level 18 superstar and bds with yet another baron make G2. Step ahead, whether it's 10, 15, 20 CS, having the bounty on his head as well. He's at 350 CS at 31 minutes as well. He may as well be the extra cap. Really on. well orchestrated there by LeBron. Honestly, I kind of expected Hans to react. I was a little surprised that he didn't. In any case, we find BDS down the bot side of the map, setting their sights on G2's GP base. Behind. What is a flank? This is the last hurrah for G2 because they've already lost Mickey, or should I say about to, as Adam runs in from the side. Broken Blade now spotted out by the deep waters. LeBron zones out. The arrow hits back line into ice, but he's unperturbed. He's fine, everyone. With the Baron as well, he's leading the minions in. This ant is marching hard. Ice is now running forward yet again. Hitting the Qs is child's play for this man who has made a very different BDS this year and is making a very easy BDS for game number one. This looks spectacular for BDS. Yuck. The poke is real. The damage is sticking. G2 are collapsing. And again, the quickness rolls on in and the BDS fans may be surprised that they start so strong. We're hyping up the G2 head to head. We're hyping up G2 in yet another challenging spot. But BDS are the ones, the Shiners, they're looking to end here. They certainly are. BDS from start to finish have found advantage after advantage. And now they're looking to secure game one against G2. With an easy comp with back to front. That's my BDS we remember. 
And with such easy gameplay, they take down the behemoths of G2 in game one. These were the best highlights from today's LEC matchup. Click that subscribe button faster than Ramus can say, okay. See you on the next one.